Okay, so uh, these are the four functional groups and the carboxylic acid is the acid group in organic chemistry. Okay, uh, and if you look at the structure, so it has this carbonyl carbon, CO, and attached to that OH. Okay, um, and these are the, uh, you know, uh, the common acids, acetic acid, propionic acid, benzoic acid. So acetic acid, actual IPEC name is ethanoic acid, but acetic acid is the common name. Now to name the carboxylic acids, uh, you have to identify, uh, you have to identify the longest carbon chain. And uh, now uh, when you identify the longest carbon chain, the COH is contained within the chain. And just like the aldehydes, the acid group always occurs at the end. Okay, so do not have to say, um, uh, you know, where in case of, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, in case of linear linear compound, but um, uh, in case of aromatic compounds, you start the numbering uh, with the carbon that has the uh, um, CO. So all, in all cases, the COH carbon gets the number one. Okay, so in in, in the in the linear compounds, but here in the aromatic compounds, you you number the ring ring that is containing the COH. And it ends with an oic acid. So you identify the longest chain. So give it an alkane name, replace the E, and put an oic acid at the end. So propane becomes propanoic acid, butane becomes butanoic acid, and so on. Um, and the simplest aromatic carboxylic acid is benzoic acid. And when the car uh, carboxyl carbon um, with the carboxyl carbon bonded to carbon number one, the ring is numbered in the direction that gives the substituent the smallest number. Okay, so you, you, you can go clockwise or anti-clockwise. So uh, you go that direction, which gives the substituent the smallest number, and that is for the aromatic compounds. So aromatic compound means the compound that contain the benzene ring. So these are some of the acids, okay? so. Uh, with carbon, so uh, if there's only COH and a hydrogen, which is the simplest acid you can get, and that is a, the formic acid. Okay, so um, the formic acid. Now, if you look at the structure of the formic acid, uh, on the left, if I look at, uh, you know, I can see a CO, CHO, that means the aldehyde group and the carboxyl group. Okay, so it's kind of overlaps. So it, it is reducing reducing acid. This is the only one that is reducing the formic acid. And the rest are uh, non-reducing acids, uh, all the rest. <clears throat> and uh, the common names, you should know the common names because they are very popular Popular common names. Probably they're, they're mostly known by these names. Okay, so naming carboxylic acids, so you, uh, you, you identify the longest chain and the numbering always starts with the carboxyl carbon as one. Okay, so uh, this is the longest chain, one, two, three, four, that's a butanoic acid. Now you have substitution at two poison, so that's a methyl, so two methyl butanoic acid. So if you are up to the structure of uh, two, four dichloropentanoic acid, um, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Um, and um, the acid is always at the end. So that means here is the acid. So this is the acid. And uh, your substitution at two, four. So these are one, two, uh, this is three, four, and five. So that means here is a methyl group or chloro group, uh, two and four. So these are the two chloros. So you can always back, work backward. Okay, so what carboxylic acid is responsible for the pain of an ant sting? So this is the formic acid. So that's how it got the name. 
So formic means and, uh, and so it's called the formic acid. What carboxylic acid is found in vinegar? That's acetic acid. Okay. So draw the condensed structural formula and give the IPEC name uh, of a carboxylic acid that has a formula C6H12O2 with no substituent. And, and B is carboxylic acid that has a formula of C6H12O2 with one ethyl. So in order to do the A, uh, basically, so C6, that means there's six carbon. So you draw six carbon uh, and, and then a, a, at the end, you put a, uh, you know acid group and that's it. There's no substitutions. But if you're doing ethyl, that means two carbon are in the, uh, in the side chain. So that means you have left with four carbon. So you draw a four carbon uh, acid and then you have to put a ethyl substituent. So four carbon, so this is my four carbon and so this is the COH. So the ethyl group, which is two carbon group, right? Uh, so it can either be in one position or it can be in two position. Okay. Uh, there are two possibilities because one, two, three uh, and two ethyl and three ethyl are two different and uh, different compounds. So this is an ethyl group, and this is an ethyl group here. So it can be either either positions. So two possibilities here. Okay, so uh, the other one is draw the condensed structural formula for a carboxylic acid, that is a formula C5, is the same thing. So you draw a five carbon chain, uh, no substituents, don't bother. If the two methyl group, then are left with um, three carbons. So draw a propanoic acid and put two methyl substitutions. So give the IPEC name. So this is, uh, the IPEC name is one, two, two carbon means ethanoic acid. Uh, and the, the uh, common name is, um, this is acetic acid, okay. For this one, it's a benzoic acid, but you have to start the numbering for B. You start the numbering with the carboxyl one, then bromo is two, three, four. So two, four dibromo, benzoic acid. And for C, uh, you have one, two, three, four, five. So this is a pentanoic acid. And the substitution is at four poison, so four methyl pentanoic acid. So this is formic acid. Okay, formic acid, the IPEC name is one carbon means methanoic acid. For B, uh, so this is uh, four chlorobenzoic acid, uh, but we can also say parachlorobenzoic acid. The two names here for B. Okay, so four chlorobenzoic acid or parachlorobenzoic acid. For C, you have two substitutions, one, two, three. So two, three dimethyl. And the main chain is one, two, three, four. Uh, so that means buta, uh, butanoic acid. So uh, two, three dimethyl butanoic acid. Okay, so, uh, so and these are easy, so you can, you can do this, right? Heptanoic acid and butanoic acid, full carbon, dibromo means two bromo. Uh, propanoic acid is three carbon and a substitution at two poison. Benzoic acid is straightforward benzoic acid. Okay. Now, the properties of the carboxylic acid the carboxylic acid has a polar group two polar groups actually. Uh, the carbonyl group is polar and the OH group is also polar. And it is this OH that basically ionizes. So it separates out and it behaves like an acid because the corresponding uh, ion is resonance stabilized. Okay, so it's stable ion, the carboxylate ion. Now if you look at the soluble in water, because of the polar group, they are soluble, but again, uh, 
if the if the chain if the hydrocarbon chain is big uh, then uh, it starts to become insoluble so the smaller acids they are soluble so like one to five carbon atom okay and uh, beyond that they're insoluble so the carboxyl group forms hydrogen bond with water uh, with long carbon chain the soluble decreases so beyond pentonic acid they are not soluble so if you look at the acidity of the carboxylic acid the behave like acid because this OH bond can ionize okay uh, and when you get this carboxylic ion this is resonance stabilized because uh, you can think of uh, that uh, this oxygen the o minus uh, the negative charge can be on either of the two oxygen so there are two resonating structures mm -hmm. Okay, now, so this is the solubility chart. Now, we, uh, so in general, you have to just remember that beyond five is not soluble. Okay, like you see here. Now, benzoic acid is uh, almost like seven carbon. Now, in case of benzoic acid, uh, it's slightly soluble. So, this hexonic, so hexonic acid is also slightly soluble. So this is the equilibrium expression of, of the iron acid or carboxylic acids. So, uh, so the iron is called, called the carboxylate iron. Okay, so the propanoid, the ions are named as a weight. So propanoic acid forms propanoid iron. So if, if there's sodium uh, salt, then we say sodium propanoid. Okay. And you can write that for any acid. So it's a similar way of iron acid. Now, just like in the acid base, you can have a nucleus in a carboxylic acids. So they are neutralized by strong base. Now, uh, when you neutralize the acid, uh, you know, you get this ion. Now, all ionic compounds are soluble. So uh, the uh, carboxylate ions, that means the salt of the carboxylic acids, they're all soluble in water, okay? And that's a technique uh, we can use to solubilize, you know, uh, these acids. We, we have to just make it slightly alkaline. So carboxylate ion is named replacing the ink acid with a uh, with the et. So methanoic acid becomes sodium methanoate. Benzoic acid becomes uh, potassium benzo. Uh, uh, so if it's if it's potassium salt. There's potassium benzoate. So benzoic acid becomes a benzoate ion. And these are the same. So sodium propanoate, the sodium benzoate, and this is another uh, you know, a commonly known uh, uh, MSG, monosodium glutamate. Okay. So these are all uh, acids here. But it has two acids, glutamate has two acid groups. So this is also an amino acid. Okay, neutralization of carboxylic acids. Write the balanced chemical equation for the nucleation of propanoic acid. So you write the propanoic acid, okay, and then just ionize it. So what you're left with here is the sodium salt and water. Okay, so always acid and base reacts to give salt and water. Okay. Now coming to uh, you know reactions or, or the conversions that you can do with the carboxylic acid. So carboxylic acid is basically considered the highest, uh, uh, you know, oxygen state. Uh, now this reduction that you see is not of the acid group, but uh, this is a biological reduction happening on the carbon and carbon. The acid group is remaining intact. So not a good example, but uh, these are the carboxylic acids that are involved in metabolism. So pyruvic acid to pyrolactic acid. Uh, this happens uh, in the muscles okay, to generate energy. <clears throat> and, uh, and there are a lot of acids involved in, the, in our uh, metabolism. If you look at the TCA cycle, okay, it's called the tricarboxylic acid cycle because of that reason. So succinic acid, fumaric acid, malic acid, oxaloacetic acid, these are all uh, part of the glucose metabolism happening in the mitochondria. So very, very important in that way, uh, functional group. So the, 
now so these are with the acids okay so um, now the acids when you react with alcohol uh, they con we say condense because uh, they join together with elimination of one molecule of water uh, so we get what you get is ester so it's very simply you can think of the hydrogen is getting replaced by alkyl group and you name the ester just like you name the salt okay just like we said sodium methanoate you say methyl ethanoate okay or methyl acetate esterification is a reaction so this reaction between alcohol and ester uh, you know uh, with the elimination of one molecule of water so if you if you think of it this way so you can think of uh, this boxing out okay up uh, this this is the water molecule uh, the so elimination of water molecule gives you uh, the ester but it doesn't happen uh, you know it needs a catalyst uh, so usual catalyst is acid catalyst okay dilute sulfuric acid and you heat it okay so uh, and it forms ester so ester have a very sweet smell so uh, when esterification happens you can get a sweet smell so the uh, the different you know fruit flavor that we get they are coming from the esters so this is the esterification reaction so this h and o h in bold is that is getting eliminated and you are basically joining them together Okay. So ester that smell like plum can be synthesized by methanoic acid and one butanol. And write a balanced equation. So write the two two acids, acid and the alcohol, just like the uh, one above, and then eliminate one molecule of water. So naming esters, so uh, their name as et, uh, methanoate, propanoate. Uh, so. You, you name it just like a salt. So the alcohol part, that means the part coming to the alcohol, uh, you, you name it first, just like sodium methanoate. That comes first and then the eight name. Okay, so the IPEC name is the acid. So we have to identify the acid and the alcohol. So name the alcohol and name the acid and put them together. But the alcohol name comes first. And this is the basic structure, uh, you know, the three D structure in models, how the acid group looks like. The red red atoms are the oxygen. Okay, write the name of this compound so you identify uh, the group uh, the group coming from the alcohol, which is in the left, and then you identify. The acid, so the acid you can see is a three carbon acid. Okay, so it's a propanoic acid, propyl, so propanoic acid, and you have a propyl group. So propyl propanoid. This is propyl propanoid. And so if it is ethyl heptanoid, like strategy 14.5, the seven carbon acid, heptanoid, and then the ethyl group. And these are some of the esters that we find in different fruits that give them the characteristic smell. Okay. okay, draw the condensed structural formula for the ester formed in the following reaction. So this is the acid group, and this is the alcohol. So what you basically do is, uh, eliminate one molecule of water. So you take this uh, OH and H. Okay, so, uh, and what do you get? So just, just join them together. The O comes with the carbon group, okay. Have to delete it. Um, and then uh, same here, next one. Eliminate one molecule of water. And these are all same, same thing. Okay, write the common name. So this methyl, the first one, 
this is methyl and then you have one carbon methyl methanoate uh, and the common name uh, because you name the acid so acid is formic acid so formic acid forms formate so methyl formate so for this one next one b you have the ethyl propanoate now uh, so ethyl propanoate all right so these are all similar okay hydrolysis of ester is just the reverse reverse of condensation that means you're adding back the water and you are, when you add back the water the oh goes with the with the with the acid acid part and the h goes with the alcohol part just exactly the reverse now again just like esterification you need a catalyst and usually catalyzed by strong acids okay now so so this is a question you'll get um, that when you hydrolyze an ester what are the products so you get an acid uh, and an alcohol now uh, the the ester hydrolysis can be done in acid as well as in base okay so if you are doing an acid you end up with an acid okay uh, ethanoic acid and methanol so methanol is kind of common but if you are doing the base the acid that is formed becomes a sodium salt okay so you get the corresponding salt and this is also called saponification reaction because that is how soaps are uh, you know soaps are made so the fat that we have they are, they are basically esters ester linkage okay so and when you hydrolyze with uh, with soda, you know sodium hydroxide uh, you basically get the salt of the fatty acids which is soap ethyl acetate so if you, acetate is the acid group here so if you are hydrolyzing it so you are going to get uh, the uh, acetate okay uh, sodium acetate and and ethyl alcohol so these are two products so if you are using potassium you get the potassium salt okay so uh, if you are hydrolyzing methyl benzoate with potassium hydroxide you will get potassium benzoate and methyl alcohol so this is also so be careful whether this is acid hydrolysis or alkali hydrolysis if it is acid hydrolysis you end up with an acid if it is the alkali hydrolysis or base hydrolysis like sodium hydroxide you'll end up with the corresponding salt and another thing to note you have to make sure which side is the acid part and which side is the alcohol part okay things may not be done exactly the same way that the acid is always to the right uh, and the picture can be just the opposite but you have to you have to basically identify the alcohol part and the acid part okay so that's acid and ester so next we have amines so amines are organic bases now what are amines if you look at amines is basically derivatives of ammonia so we know ammonia is a base okay so the derivatives of ammonia also bases so you are replacing the hydrogens with alkyl groups now depending on how many hydrogens you are replacing uh, you can have a primary amine secondary amine and tertiary amines okay so uh, if you look at uh, the uh, naming amines and classifying amines uh, the alkyl groups are listed in the alphabetical order when you're writing the name so the common names of amines are often used when the alkyl groups are not branched and the alkyl groups are listed in alphabetical order and di and tri are used to indicate two or three identical substitutions so trimethylamine dimethylamine and these are kind of common names that we we'll see okay so basically the common name is used as uh, the amine name and and looking at an amine you should be able to tell whether this is a one degree two degree or three degree amine now these amines have lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen just like ammonia and that's why uh, they can act like a base because these electrons can be donated and another definition of base we know is uh, which is lewis definition that bases are electron donors and they can take up hydrogen to form the ammonium so all these 
like just like uh, ammonia atom from ammonium ion all these amines can be acidified so that they form the corresponding ammonium salts and when when something from the salt they are soluble the ammonium salts are soluble okay and so uh, you will often find drugs being sold as hydrochloride because it's acidified otherwise it won't go into solution okay uh, you convert that to the corresponding ammonium salt so the aromatic amines uh, you know uh, so this is important we, uh, so remember i said that there's uh, this guy this is the ipec name aniline so there are four of them toluene aniline uh, benzaldehyde and phenol four uh, so aniline is an uh, uh, in aromatic so this is considered the base name and so this is four bromo aniline now, if there's substitutions on the N, on the nitrogen, then you have to write it like this, N-methyl. So that means the methyl group is on nitrogen or N-N-dimethyl, N-N-dimethyl aniline or N-methyl aniline. So you have to put that N there. Now, aromatic amines, uh, they are used for making dyes, so indigo, so these are, I mean, here. Uh, so these are, uh, you know, good dyes, and you can make other dyes, synthetic dyes with them. The kind of industrially important. Now, okay. So give the common name of each of the following amines. So this is ethyl amine. Okay. Now for this one, uh, so you have to basically identify the main chain. Uh, that means this is N-methyl. So this is this long list chain. So ethylamine, but ethylamine with two substitutions of nitrogen. So NN dimethyl ethylamine. Its name is ethyl dimethylamine. Ethyl dimethylamine. Okay, so that's another way you can tell. You just put in the alphabetical order, the two methyl groups. Okay, so methyl, dimethylamine. So we'll stick to that. We don't need the N in this case, because uh, uh, in case of uh, aromatic groups, you have to write the N for sure. So, uh, you know, that way the naming naming of the amines is kind of easy. You, you just go, and same for the ethers, right? So you go by alphabetical order and end with an uh, ether. So you have to you go by alphabetical order and end with the amine. Skeletal formula. So when you write the skeletal formula, the nitrogen must be shown. So unlike carbon, where you don't need to show the carbons, all other, functional group, whether it's N or O, anything that is not carbon and hydrogen has to be shown. Okay, just like this. So amines in health and medicine. So these are, you know, important amines in medicines. Um, and again, often time, uh, we have to make the hydrochlorides to make them soluble. So solubility of amines, the amine NH bond that's polar, so uh, and it's uh, you know soluble, uh, but the smaller uh, smaller amines are soluble, okay, just like the acid and or the alcohols, but beyond four uh, they do not want to go into solution. So primary amines can form more hydrogen bonds than secondary amines. Now the amines can form hydrogen bond. Now because the nitrogen can be substituted, that means which is substitutions you are, you are losing in hydrogen to form hydrogen bond. And that means the ability to form hydrogen bond with water will progressively decrease. Okay, so primary amines, they can form uh, you know, more, the most number of hydrogen bonds and then the secondary and then the tertiary. And the tertiary amines form hydrogen bond between the nitrogen and the hydrogen. So only because there's no hydrogen left, right? So only the nitrogen can do something. So that's why I see one dotted line. So amines react with bases, or you can just add the acid also to form the corresponding ammonium ion. Okay, just like ammonia forms the ammonium ion. Now, 
these are called the alkyl ammonium ion, so the methyl ammonium or dithyl ammonium ion, and these are highly soluble in water. So nucleus now amines and ammonium salts. So in the nucleus reaction, amine acts as the base. So bases are proton acceptor. So they accept the proton and become the ammonium ammonium salt. Uh, and and they become soluble. So this is methyl ammonium chloride. This dimethyl amine becomes dimethyl ammonium chloride. So these are ionic compounds. They are solid at room temperature uh, and soluble in water and body fluids. So amine drugs are usually converted to their hydrochloride or the ammonium salt. So ephedrine, hydrochloride. So when you are basically uh, doing the reactions of amine, uh, you know, with acid, so just from the uh, NST plus and Cl minus here, uh, that's the hydrochloride. So uh, now you can precipitate it as a salt because it's just like a salt. Now there are hetero, there are cyclic amines, important ones. So we are also have cyclic ethers. Okay, remember the cyclic ethers uh, like uh, tetrahydrofuran. Okay, so these are good solvents. So heterocyclic amines is a cyclic compound with one or one or more nitrogen atom in the ring. Okay, uh, typically consists of five or six member ring because that that's they are more stable, the ring structure. And these are some of uh, the well-known amines in nature. Okay, uh, quinine, atropine, and so on. Okay, write the common name of each of the following. So uh, this is, uh, you have a, a propyl group and you have a methyl group. So going by alphabetical order. Okay, the first one is a propyl amine. So no substitutions. Here you have two substitutions. In C, you have a diethyl and methyl. So E comes first, then M. So diethyl, methyl, I mean. And these are, these are named the same way. And here we have the reverse. So basically, um, you know, you draw the structure and if there's an N substitute, like N, N methyl aniline, that means you draw aniline and there's a nitrogen on N, uh, there's a methyl group with M. So, uh, so draw the aniline structure, replace one hydrogen with a methyl. Okay, similarly here, N and diethyl, that means replace two hydrogens, okay, with the ethyl, with two ethyl groups. Now classify each of the following as primary, secondary, tertiary. So if there's one substitution, that's primary. So A is primary. Now if you look at B, so there are two substitutions here. Okay, because there's still one hydrogen left. So this is a secondary, two degree. Amines, uh, you can react to an amine with a carboxylic acid. So these are organic acid-based reaction. Acid and the amines are the bases. So uh, what you get is an amide. Now if you look at what an amide is, basically you are taking this OH, replacing the OH with the NH2. So you're replacing the OH of an acid with a, with a NH2 group. And this is what is happening. So basically this HOH elimination is happening. So these are condensation reaction. So you have to heat it, okay? And one, one molecule of water is removed and they come together. Uh, and this is the amide leakage. So the proteins, proteins contain amino acids. And these amino acids link, uh, are linked together by amide linkage, okay? So there's one, uh, so, and there it is catalyzed by enzymes, uh, which is basically the ribosome. So amide name, uh, you know, uh, you, you first identify, uh, identify the acid group and put an amide. So uh, propanoic acid becomes propanamide, okay? Uh, so here they are putting uh, propanoic acid and methylamine, uh, <clears throat> so, this is a propanamide, 
And if you look at the amine part, it's a, it's a N-methyl. So N-methyl propionamide. amide. So formation of amide, so this is ammonia, so that means it will just become an amide. So benzoic acid becomes benzanamide. Okay. So here, yeah, take away one molecule of water. So basically, you take away one molecule of water. So the solutions are done here. So naming amide, replace the oic acid uh, with the name amide. Okay, and name is substituent on the nitrogen using the prefix N and the alkyl name. So that means this is one, two, three, four, butanic acid is becomes butanamide and there is substitution with nitrogen to methyl. So dimethyl, N N dimethyl butanamide. So these are some of the you know amides. As I said, and the proteins are basically amides. Okay. So benzoic acid from benzanamide. So take away the oic acid and put amide. For this one, one, two, three, four. So you have a butanoic acid, so butanamide. Okay. And the substitution of nitrogen. So N ethyl butanamide. Okay. Now solubility, solubility of amides. So amides do not have properties of base because they're already neutralized. Okay, uh, uh, so they are unlike amines, they are less soluble. Amides can form hydrogen bond with water. So, uh, so uh, the carbonyl group is still there, so they can form hydrogen bond. And we'll see that proteins can form hydrogen bond, and that's how they can do the they get this you know nice structures. Uh, and the amides with one to five carbon atoms are soluble in water, and with longer uh, chain, the solubility decreases. Okay, so uh, urea is amide, and other well-known and you know. Uh, amides in nature are uh, phenobarbital, okay, also called luminal, and phenobarbital, so L, and uh, this is this is pento, pentobarbital. So that means uh, it's, it's a longer carbon chain instead of this uh, uh, phenyl group. So pheno, uh, basically the ring structure is the barbital. The, the with the with the oxygens in there. Phenacetine. Now you don't need to memorize these names. Okay, it's just to uh, let you know that these are there in nature. But I'll not be asking you a specific question on this. Uh, on the examples. So hydrolysis of amides. If you want to do the reverse, okay, that means you hydrolyze the amides. Uh, so. Uh, you add, you are basically adding HOH. Now they are acid catalyzed and they can be base catalyzed. And so the catalysis, even though, but is basically addition of water. So that's why we say hydrolysis. And depending on whether it's acid catalyzed or basically, just like we saw in the case of acids or carboxylic acids, you can get the acid form or the salt form. Okay, now here you have the additional uh, amine. Now there we used to get alcohol. Now the amine, the amine part uh, can take up a proton and become ammonium salt. And that is possible if you are doing acid catalyzed. So depending on whether your, uh, your hydrolysis is catalyzed by acid or, or a base, you will have two different products. So acid catalyzed, give the corresponding acid and uh, plus the amine hydrochloride. That means the, so you can pass from the amine and then uh, add a, uh, then protonate it. That means add a proton to form the ammonium chloride. Now if you're doing base catalyzed, now uh, your acid part, you know, uh, forms a salt. 
So in the base catalyze, you form the uh, salt of the acid and the amine just remains as amine. So two different situations here, okay? So acid catalyze gives you the acid, but the ammonium salt. Base catalyze gives you the acid salt and the amine. So uh, this is the amide. And when you are forming the salt, the ONA goes with the acid part and the H goes with the amine part. Okay, and if, if this is a base catalyzed, that means this becomes the ONA becomes the salt. Okay, so you get the corresponding acid salt and, and the amine. So this time the amine is not going to form hydrochloride because for, from the hydrochloride, it needs acid. So if it's acid catalyzed, we are putting H here, um, uh, OH and H, but then you are doing additional, you know, H plus ion addition. So uh, if you if you do a draw the columnar structure form of the product from the hard disk of N methyl butyramine with HBr. So um, what you basically do is so four carbon which includes the acid. So one, two, uh, three, one, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, so um, so this is the acid. But because you are doing HBr, so we are doing uh, this with HBr, that means we are using an acid. So the amine will become uh, the hydrochloride. So this methyl, uh, you know, CH3NH2. So CH3NH2 becomes CH2, CH3NH3 plus because it's taking extra proton. So it will take, become a hydrochloride and uh, Br minus, because we are in HBr, we get the bromide salt. Uh, so if you, if you get a question like this on the hydrolysis, uh, which there's a big chance that you'll get one in the exam. Uh, so this is what you do, okay? So on the acid part, if it is, a, uh, if it is acid hydrolysis, uh, then you are doing HOH, you'll get the acid and the hydrochloride salt, okay? Uh, like this. With the acid hydrolysis, with the alkali, uh, sorry, the acid hydrolysis in the top, okay, and the, with the alkali hydrolysis, um, you'll get the uh, salt of the uh, acid and uh, and the amine. So the acid hydrolysis, you're getting the hydrochloride. So that's the two differences here, okay. Okay, so draw the condensed structural formula for the amide formed in each of the following reactions. So if you are just doing heat, is basically uh, is uh, hydrolysis by water, okay. So that means uh, is similar to the acid hydrolysis. Okay, so you're going to condense this. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. This is condensation. This condensation, so you are forming the amide, amide linkage. So acetamide in the first reaction. So just eliminate one molecule of water. Okay, so box it and eliminate one molecule of water. So all, all of these are same. So write the IUPAC name. So always identify identify the acid. Uh, re uh, remove the oic acid name and put the amide. So acetamide is the common name for this one. Otherwise, this ethanamide. A for A for 14.41 A. Uh, for B, um, so you have amide and this is one, two, three, four. So, uh, so butyramide, butyric acid given butyramide. Uh, that's the common name. Uh, otherwise, is butanoic acid, uh, so butanamide as the IPEC name. Okay, and here the acid group is 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 the formic acid. Okay, uh, in C, uh, so formic acid, and then you have a, a ethyl group on NAN, uh, on nitrogen. So uh, formamide, formamide with a with a ethyl. So N ethyl formamide, that's the common name. So if you if you write it as IPEC name, formic acid is uh, methanamide, uh, methanoic acid, uh, methanamide. So N ethyl methanamide. Or 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 uh, uh, yeah, so N, N, N ethyl methanamide. Yeah, and uh, and this one is uh, in B fourteen point four two. Uh, so this is benzoic acid, benzonamide. 
okay so benzalamide and nn dimethyl nn dimethyl benzalamide so kind of straightforward uh, naming um, and uh, so this is the summary of of, of all these four uh, you know functional groups so amines amides carboxylic acids and the esters so amines they contain nitrogen so derivatives of ammonia okay and then ammonia uh, the nitrogen has substitutions so you can have substitutions uh, with alkyl or aromatic groups the soluble up to uh, five to six carbon atom the weak bases the, so they are considered as organic bases react with acid from amides so the amides um, so amides you can do the reverse reaction you can hydrolyze the amides so these are the two important one acid catalyzed and base catalyzed so when you are doing acid catalyzed you get carboxylic acid and ammonium salt when you are doing the base catalyzed you get the carboxylate salt and the amine the amines are made soluble like in the drugs you made the hydrochlorides to make them soluble okay the ammonium salt the carboxylic acids uh, you know they contain the carboxyl group which is the acid group in organic chemistry they are polar so they behave as weak all organic acids are weak acids and uh, if you neutralize uh, with a strong base you get the carboxylate ion so basically the carboxylate salt and they react with alcohol uh, to form esters okay with elimination of one molecule of water and you can hydrolyze the ester that's the reverse so you can do acid catalyzed hydrolysis or you can do um, you know base catalyzed hydrolysis the base catalyzed hydrolysis is called saponification and uh, basically you get what you call the soap soap formation reaction uh, so corresponding salt of the carboxylic acid plus alcohol and this is the summary for the naming so yeah, you have two kind of naming here common name and iupac name so when you do the iupac name you take the acid name take away the oic acid okay um, and put the eight um, for the esters uh, so for the acids you just name it as oic acid and for the esters you name it as a weight methyl methanol just like a salt okay amines are named as amines so you say uh, uh, the substitutions in in alphabetical order so here there's one substitution, so ethylamine. If there are two, then you will say diethylamine. Uh, if there's a, you know, like methyl and ethyl, then you go by alphabetical order. Ethyl comes first, E, and then methyl. Ethyl, methylamine. Amides, so you take the acid name, uh, throw away the weak acid, and put an amide. So ethanamide, okay, the common name is acetamide. And if the substitutes on uh, on nitrogen, then uh, you uh, say N-methyl ethanamide. And this is the summary of reactions. Okay, very important here. So kind of you know put them all together. So uh, the ionize the carbo they're weak acids. So the ionization is not very not like hydrochloric acid. So all organic acids are weak acids. And in the ionize, they they form the hydronium ion and the carboxylate ion. So if you neutralize the carboxylic acid, like if you neutralize the acetic acid, okay, you get the corresponding salt and water. Esterification is the reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol to form an ester. And uh, you can catalyze that by acid. So you heat it in place of acid. Now, if you don't add acid, the esterification still happen, but not to that extent. And so what you get is the corresponding ester, and the esters are named just like salt, so methyl ethanoid. So weight name. Acid hydrolysis is the reverse of esterification. So you are adding back, uh, you know, water. So OH goes with the carboxyl group, and the hydrogen goes with the alcohol. So in the, uh, in the hydrolysis of ester, if you are using acid, it stops here and the acids you know larger acids are insoluble but if you do alkali hydrolysis base hydrolysis uh, and that's saponification then you get the salt of the acid okay so that's called the saponification reaction and so you can think of ona going with the acid and the hydrogen going with the alcohol part 
Now coming to amines, so uh, amines, uh, they are weak bases. So uh, if you put them in water, they form the um, ammonium salt. But if you acidify, you know, it's even better. So you get uh, this ammonium salt, uh, you know, um, uh, ammonium salt, which can be crystallized. So you get the solid hydrochloride salts. Amidacin is the condensation between carboxylic acid and amines. So you get the corresponding amides. So propanoic acid gives propanamide. Now you can have substituted amines also. So then you say N-methyl or N-ethyl, uh, you know, propanamide. And hydrolysis of amide is just the reverse of amidacin. So you are basically uh, taking these two parts apart. And it is catalyzed by acid, or it can be catalyzed by base. When you're catalyzed by acid, you get the corresponding acid, but the ammonium salt. Okay, if you're catalyzing by base, then you get the salt of the carboxylic acid and the amine. Okay. So this is basically this chapter.